Let's make some noise. You're kicking it with Bird Radio. Hi, Ted. <laughs> Hello. Tony Law. Welcome to Verve Radio. Well, it's sure great to be here, Verve. <laughs> <laughs> feel like I've been here before. Oh, it's no, no, I didn't oh. get a good one. There. Okay, Nobody <laughs> likes uh, someone in shakes like that. I don't know why. What yeah. does that prove? I don't know. You know, and they go, oh, he doesn't have a good handshake. I don't trust that. It Some people come in too strong, I find. Oh, well. yeah. Then you just think you're insecure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something's going on. You're hiding something. Anyway, right. yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, uh, tell us a little bit about your background in stand-up comedy. Uh, Tony Law, stand-up comedian, yeah, you've been doing it for a while. Okay. And I've had uh, peaks of success, and I'm sort of in the middle of a relaunch of myself after uh, the guy in my head before mm -hmm. just made him, you know, just got a little bit off, off track. So I've come in last year in a bit, and I'm trying to right the ship, so fix them. Anyway, so I do comedy, uh, Edinburgh Fringe and the old bits of telly. Okay. And I'm doing uh, some shows coming up. I don't want to plug straight away. It looks too uh, earnest, doesn't it? But 21st to the 29th of October, anyway, <laughs> whatever. I'm going to be at Leicester Square Theatre doing my nonsense. Doing your my nonsense. My shouty nonsense. My Avant, avant, ga, ava, avant, avant garde. Garde, yeah. yeah, I don't know what it means. <laughs> but if I figure if I attach enough uh, arty labels to it, that will um, that will help people who who don't find it super funny. They'll go, well, this is art. Yeah, you can get away with that in London, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. You know, people who love it really love it. Think it's mm -hmm. really funny. You have to really be ready to go with it. Mm -hmm. I think you can't be like. Uh, Go on, tell me some stuff I already think. Remind me of stuff. Yeah. But um, I th it's a pretty good show, though. Yeah. So it's all quite alternative, your comedy. Your yeah, I suppose is, uh, they call it that. I'm trying to make it more mainstream. Really working hard for that, because I need the bread. Yeah. Just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And I want more exposure. I'm tired of being the the uh, comics like, oh, yeah, it's great. It's a bit, whoa. I want to be more sort of. I want more people to see it. I want everyone to see it. The world. Well, right on, man. Yeah. Deserve and I, I, I probably would have been doing a lot better right now if I hadn't have, like messed it up a couple of times. But I was very ill, and um, so I know that. So I'm really desperate to claw back time and go. And and it also, it's much easier now to do it. Well, you know, like 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. So, what was the question? <laughs> Alternative comedy. Alternative How comedy, yeah. That's, I think that's what they call it, but it's, um, it's, it's just... Well, it's subject matter is all that stuff. I do... I'm a bit like... I'm not that dissimilar to some like... I, I do voices and characters, and I guess not super clever. Some of the odd thing is, it's obscure sometimes, but I'm trying to make it less that. And I'm a bit of, I'm into history, so I do a lot of... I used to do a lot of history stuff. Just random. So I take things where uh, perhaps the audience hadn't thought of and mm -hmm. then do a routine in that world. So to keep it like a surprise, because that's what I like. I like going to a show and not, I don't want to hear the same subjects that I've heard before. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes I do. I don't know. I'm try I try and keep it original. I think but nothing's really original, is it? That's deep, deep comedy. Yeah, that's yeah. too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, Performance, I was saying that yours is quite heavy on that. I think that's quite good, can work with comedy because obviously to be stood up there on stage for an hour, an hour and a half, and just talking to people is going to be, there's got to have that uh, kind of appeal to it, I think. Obviously, yeah. Like performance based. If you, if you, uh, I got this new riff now where I do, I uh, talk about being a semi professional trampolinist mm. in the 1970s, and I created a, this whole world of this community of trampolinists, a thing that I'm pretty sure is not real. Yeah. But, uh, and I think if you can sell that to an audience and get people laughing, they can't kind of, I think, I, I don't achieve it every, I didn't achieve it every show at Edinburgh, but some shows, people were crying in hysterics. Mm -hmm. But then there was other shows where people were just staring, going, Jesus, this guy's <laughs> terrible. So, <laughs> so I need to get that happy medium. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, um, um, yes, so it, I think you go in with an open mind, you'll think it's pretty good. Yeah. What? Oh, I enjoy it. I mean, yeah, I'm it's a, good. a I big think it's fan good. personally. So. If you're a comedy fan, you'll like it. And you like Sean Locke, don't you? I do indeed. So, 
not a million miles away. Well, he's more, he's just, I'm learning from him. He keeps it tighter. He's tamed it. He's just got it. Cha, cha, boo, boo, boo. That's what I'm trying to do. It's get more like that. So in terms of influences to your comedy, you definitely say Sean Locke is... Sean Locke for sure. Um, Harry Hill, when I first started out. Uh, Simon Munnery. Even a bit of Stuart Lee before he was uh, all over the place. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the usual Monty Python, all the sort of left field guys. Yeah. I really enjoy it. I just like being surprised. There's a guy called James Ross who's a new guy, young chap. He's very funny. Very theatrical. Mm. I like all that sort of... I like to be surprised. So I don't like one specific style, I don't think. Mm. I like when someone just... You just think, wow, that... When someone makes you laugh, I don't like... Uh, you know when you can just sense people have funny bones? Yeah on stage rather than other people that feel like they've learnt it. Mm. So it's hard to, I don't know, you just know something. It's, it's all different for everyone's got a different thing. So um, all you want is m as many people as possible to see it and then decide. Yeah. It's difficult to get to that point. Anyways, I'm not a great interviewee. <laughs> no, it's all good, yeah, it's all good. Good. The so uh, career highlights, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say probably, it, the fact you, I've seen, I've seen eight or ten cats. First time I saw you, oh, Sean, yeah. you're on there with Sean Locke. Is, is that up there? Or what no, would you say? I, I'd sort of regret back then because I didn't, I wasn't um, firing on all cylinders like I am now. Okay. I could have done better. I wasn't as I wasn't as confident and all that. So I didn't really nail those, and blow them away like I could do. I like um, have a good news for you. Every time I've been on that, I've had a good time, which is weird because you would assume. It uh, it wouldn't work for me, and I, and I, I enjoyed um, uh, what was it Buzzcocks? I'm sad that went. I really enjoyed that. I like Buzzcocks, and and uh, I haven't got news for you because when they go in, there's no preparation at all. Yeah, you just ta da, you're right there. Love that. The Buzzcocks episode, you were on uh, you know Noel's, Noel's team, weren't you? Mm. Yeah. I think I did three. I've definitely seen Always one. On, uh, when I had beard. Yeah. They were. What happened to the beard? I want it, well, because I wanted, I'm relaunching myself from the, you know, the, the new healthy, sane Tony Law. Because they're, you know, they're 2014 15, I was, um, ho, I was farming. Uh, Fireman. Hitting, um, <laughs> so now I've pulled it up. Right. And yeah, so I thought, well, shave the beard. Tony Law 2.0. New 0. start, 2.0 there, yeah. <laughs> Tony Law, new, the new beginning. Could be a new tour name. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you mentioned the uh, the tour dates earlier. Leicester oh. Square Theatre. Yeah, Leicester Square Theatre, 21st to 29th. But before then, I've got the probably the dumbest gig I've ever taken in my life. The Edinburgh Comedy Awards. I right, got a new sponsor. Yeah. Uh, Lastminute.com, and they said, "Hey, you were a nominee in 2012, and you do Edinburgh. And would you like to help promote uh, the the awards?" And I went, "Yeah." And uh, is there some money in this? And I went, oh, great. I'll do it in my usual style. I'll just do it. <laughs> I'll take it. And then they, and they said, oh, well, you, we're going to do like a gorilla thing to create interest in, the, <coughs> in our shows. <clears throat> and I'm uh, going to do a gig on the tube. And I'm going, ha, yeah, right. That'll never work. That's the worst idea ever. But then I got my head around it and thought, well, yeah, they'll get all the staff from the awards and they'll get the new crew and they'll, we'll all get ourselves a tube car mm -hmm. and then I'll do it to people who want to be there but no it's just randomly jumping on the tube to people who have no interest in you being there so the unwritten well it's not unwritten you know the rule of comedy as you know works between the act wants to be there yeah people who have the venue want you to be there and the people that they either pay or making uh, uh, the effort to come mm -hmm. and you do a gig and it's great this is no one wants to be there <laughs> I'm gonna be just interrupting people's lives for, to, pleasure. To, to ra to, for their pleasure, to raise awareness for the Edinburgh Awards, which are uh, awarding shows that are done in safe theatres. Anyway, it's too late now. <laughs> I've already spent the money. Rent, new football boots, it's done, so i got to do it. i got to pretend I'm not bothered. i got to go on the tube and just think, yeah, I'm bulletproof. Saturday night. night. Saturday night, what, nothing bad's going to happen. No, nothing. Nothing at all. Everybody's sober. I mean, they are sending two loops. people from the... Um, I mean, that was one of the things that sent the alarm bells going. They're sending a couple of the TFL 
staff with us. And I thought, oh, what's what here? <laughs> Case, uh, you know. Oh, God. Act in security. But I'm doing it with another act. Okay. Scott Gibson. Who, oh, cool. Oh, thank God. Can you imagine just on your own? Mm. So that I, I guess I'm going to get a real insight into, like, you know when people uh, ask for change on the tube? Yeah. I always think they're so freaking brave. Yeah. But, that, but then, you know, I don't want, this is going to sound all wrong, isn't it? But they're not trying to get a laugh. Actually, there's one guy who's really good. I should find him. <laughs> I should find him. He's better than me, then. Could have tagged him in when it got If I can get one laugh, then I win. Just, if I can get two laughs, <laughs> I should shoot higher. <laughs> anyway, too much time on that. So, yeah, um, thanks for having me. It's Any fine. more questions? Ah, uh, yeah, a couple more. Okay, uh, great. Tickets for Leicester Square, all online, people can find them. Oh, see. yeah, I'd go to the Leicester Square Theatre website. I'd, I'd go there. I think, yeah. Yeah, of course they'll have them. And social media, they can find it on that too? Yeah, I guess so. What What do people do mostly? I do Facebook. Yeah, I think Facebook's pretty big still. Twitter is it? Is quite good. I do Twitter. Mm. Mr. Tony Law, I do Twitter. But I don't have any... People will ask me where can I get tickets and I say, I don't know. <laughs> Facebook. I'm a see, I'm a poor marketing person. Bio information, that's where you stick it all in. Yeah, there. I really need help on marketing. So if there's anybody watching or listening who's good at marketing, you can help me out. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I think you've been doing a pretty good job with the dogs. I mean, oh yeah, my new the dog bags. I've got a couple of plugs in there. My new, my new uh, hit series episode. What will be 12, 13, 14? Huh? 12, 13, 14. Yeah, calling my dogs back <laughs> in the woods. Does what it says in the tin. I call them back, and then they either come back or don't. Pretty. Uh, it's, it's it's getting quite. A, it's getting a few fans. I haven't released them onto YouTube yet mm. because you know I want to play out the first series yeah. <laughs> to the hardcore fans first and then you know then the world can come there's a bit of a I've noticed a bit of a budding romance happening oh, with Ziggy yeah. and Wolfie Ziggy's just out of oh yeah it's my mother-in-law's dog and we're yeah we, we're keeping her because she's trying to eat her puppies oh, oh God. she's vicious <laughs> and her and Wolfie and, and she's about that big I know she's, uh, but and Wolfie he just he likes her and I feel like I don't get the same amount of attention from them. But I don't show that in front of them. Show, you know, I, I don't want them to feel guilty. I don't don't introduce any guilt into it. <laughs> I try and be brave, you know. I'm just that's the way it is right now. <laughs> I see you've uh, you welcome Ziggy into the group a bit, kind of like, oh, well, I kind of got to do it. You don't seem too pleased about it, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't. I want to be cool about it. So yeah, whatever. It's only a dog. <laughs> she does take up a lot of his time. And then when you go to cuddle him at home and do some playing, she's always there. You know, it's just like give us a minute. <laughs> but you know, you want to leave a good example to the kids, so I don't, I don't lock her in the other room. While I'm, well, I did once, but <laughs> let's try to eat something. Yeah, and and um, they're just perfect length, aren't they? <laughs> About one minute. Yeah, I think they were, uh, yeah, but I remember there's a few fifty-nine seconds in that first. We kept it proper tight. It's <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> Yeah, so that's my Instagram. Yeah, yeah, and uh, BBC been sniffing around yeah. uh, over those. Didn't want to expand it into a series. I'm talking to HBO though. I'm getting <laughs> getting a bidding war started. Thinking I'm not off Game of Thrones replacing it with Ziggy. Well, thing. they're they're trying to work out like how you can make calling your dog back in the woods. Mm. How you can fit that into a 25 minute episode. 24 minute episodes. Is that what you're aiming for? 24, 24 minutes. minutes for the US market. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't think it, you could sustain it over an hour. Mm. Thrones is a 45 minute hour, isn't it? Yeah, roughly, yeah. Yeah, I think it would probably be 24 minutes. You could fit an arc in there because it's call, come back, goodbye. So it's got it all. And all that happens in between the romance, the yeah. sex. You, the you can really bombs. tell a story a lot quicker just through your face you know that's the you don't need to have all that dialogue true yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh last question for you okay uh, any advice for anybody interested in performance or particularly um stand-up comedy because we've got theater performing arts at the university so it'd be well it's a great advice. time to do it um uh yeah just keep going because the the thing about uh, i would say is if you do it and you have no confidence and you you just keep going because it'll come. Because mm -hmm. it shouldn't be just a game reserved for people who are just bulletproof, you know, just mm -hmm. 
because uh, there's loads of funny people who are just also very uh, shy, <laughs> you know, and uh, polite and just don't want to, you know, like, it, so, yeah, just keep going and always do what you think is funny <laughs> rather than catering. Okay. But then that could be the worst advice ever. Could could be could be the thing that makes you different. Though. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, keep it going. Yeah, this is a good time to do it, especially landing. Mm. True. Okay. Well, thank you very much for My coming pleasure. today. Thanks for having it's me. Good speaking with you. And you. Thank you.